if I remember correctly, your dad was actually pretty famous, wasn't he? Well, famous in the assisted living world. Yep. He's known as the okay. godfather of residential assisted living. And you're asking, like, what do we do about is you sign a contract with someone? So real quick, before you did that, did you... more than 30 years i got my real estate license in the um, and your your origin story is that he uh, he made an age joke the last time we were uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna use that kuka you know I, i'm a little more strict with what i'm i'm looking at uh hey everyone out there in YouTube land in our Facebook group, Metro Detroit Off Market Real Estate Group. How are you guys doing today? So I got a special, special treat. I went and saw uh, this person, Isabel, at the MREI Real Estate Meetup Group. And I fell in love with how she's presenting everything with, with her business model I'm not saying I'm going to do that, but I'm just, just the idea and everything. So I wanted to bring that to you guys. I wanted to bring whatever she said over to here and I can't really explain it very well. I will lose words. So guess what I did is I brought on Isabella just to bring it on. She is the CEO of uh, RAL uh, Academy as well. And uh, she is also runs her own assisted living facilities all around the country. I can't wait to have you guys hear her origin story, her what she's doing now, as well as what she can do to help you guys out. So, without further ado, I'm going to pronounce Isabel. How are you doing, Isabel? Doing great. Thanks so much for having me. Awesome. So. I was really, truly blown away when I met you at the MREI real estate meetup group here in Michigan. So, um, you know, for anybody out in YouTube, if you're not in Michigan, this is, that's where I met her. Uh, where are you based out of? I believe it was it Arizona. Yeah. Phoenix. You got it. Phoenix. Awesome. So, but you do, you do assistant living places all over the country, right? I own and operate my own three here in the Phoenix Scottsdale market okay. and they teach and train investors how to do it in all 50 states, even other countries. So yeah, we've got oh, that's awesome. all over. <laughs> that is awesome. So with that being said, uh, let me bring up. So how, tell me a little bit about how you got started. Yeah, actually for us, it's really close to home. My grandmother fell, she broke her hip and she needed assisted living. And my family kind of got introduced to the concept then when it meant something to us, when it was needed to us. I mean, we'd seen mm -hmm. a big box, we'd driven by a Brookdale, but we never knew what was really going on, what was involved, how much it costs, all that good stuff. And so right. my dad had been a real estate investor for 40 years. And um, at that point he was doing quick math and he's like, wait, 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 wait. We're either gonna pay five grand a month for her to live in one of these homes, or mm -hmm. we could own and operate the home and the business and she could live for free and we could be cash flowing 10 grand a month. I think we should get yeah. in. So um, he purchased his first one with the intent to move my grandmother in. She passed before we could, we could get her in, but we really fell in love with the concept, ended up buying two more and then have taught thousands of other people how to do this because truly we just had never seen cash flow and impact in this way. So I'm going to re re reel you back here for a moment because you said something that probably not a lot of people picked up on, but because, well, I'm a wholesaler, if you haven't, if you don't know, um, and I always have to run the numbers for buy and hold investors. One thing that you kind of said that I picked up on was five grand of cash flow. Five grand a month for her to live in the home, or okay. if we owned and operated the business, it'd be 10 grand a month in cash flow for us. And she'd live for free. Yeah. So essentially, that's 15 grand in cash flow because you're, if you were paying, essentially. If your loved one lived there, potentially. If your loved one lived there. 
My God, 10 grand. That is a lot of dang. Okay, I'm sorry. Continue. That that just, you know, I that's the it is the second time I've heard it, hearing it. So, but it still it still shocks me every time. Well, good. So, I'm glad that it's exciting to you because that's exactly yes. what we do is depending on your market and how many seniors you're allowed to have in the home, it usually ranges somewhere between six to 16 seniors within the home. So that number mm -hmm. of, you know, 5,000 is really based on having somewhere in the middle, like 10 residents in the home. Right. And the thing is, for real estate investors, it's not like we're exempt from aging, right? It's not like we're exempt from having aging loved ones. We deal with this too, but we have a unique skill that maybe not everybody else in the world has, right? They they see right. their aging loved one and they say, I don't know what to do. I don't have any options. And so they just automatically go to the big facility instead of looking at options and saying, what can I use with the skills I already have? Mm -hmm. That is awesome. So, yeah, you always have to look at what you have, what you have available and see how you can do it from there. So, um, you know, and it, when when you spoke, it actually hit me home. The reason why is, is my mother is going through stage four um, pancreatic cancer right now. So she's on disability because of, you know, at the moment now. Thank God, luckily, she lives in her own house. She owns her own home. Um, but, and my 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 little sister actually lives with her to be able to take care of her. Mm. But if she, if my little sister didn't live with her, we'd have to do something like that. Yeah. And that that stuff is expensive. Yeah. So it would, it would eat through the equity of her house very, very fast. Yeah. So and it would fall on you guys, the adult children, to foot yep. the bill. 100%. So I'm one of four, but it's still a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, you know, tell me a little bit about how you got started in this, because did you just wake up one day and say, I'm going to start assisted living because you, you told me that you said your grandmother was, I, uh, what you were looking for your grandmother. So your father was looking into that. Okay? Yeah. So he purchased so how did, one. Yeah. yeah. So how did you get into it as his child? Did you just say, I'm going to follow in his footsteps or did you take your own path and then come back? Yes. Yeah, so I was a flight attendant at when all of this was happening. I had graduated college, okay. I went out to travel and have fun and be free and um, wasn't making a ton of money, you know, grew up with a very entrepreneurial father who was always in real estate. Um, mm -hmm. And when I would be home on my trips, I started to notice that he had sold all of his other forms of real estate and he was only doing this living. And I knew okay. why, you know, he'd gotten into it, why he had um, done that obviously because of my grandmother, but I didn't really know what it was all about. And so on my off days, I just started kind of going into his office, learning a little bit more, visiting the homes, checking out this and that. Um, and he asked me, you know, uh, if, if I was interested and wanted to learn more and we just started kind of slowly working together. Eventually I, um, quit my job, became one of his first employees, and we own the three homes and five other businesses. And so I was his right hand gal running all of those um, up until okay. he passed in 2021. And then I, you know, took everything over as the as the front lady. So um, it's been <laughs> quite a journey, right? Almost eight years by his side, um, and that was so amazing being able to work with him in that way and really just learn this industry from the inside out. That's awesome. Now, did he make you do every job? Just did about me. I just did them all because that is what you do when you're building a business from one person to 50 people from one company to five. You just you have to put your boots down and be the end all be all. So I knew exactly. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. Yeah. 100 percent. And it's it's like, if, OK, if you don't know how to do it. How can you train somebody else to do it? Exactly. You know? So we didn't have any of the departments that are involved, you know, these days. So I had to right. become that, you know, leader of that department, figure it all out, figure out the systems and the processes so that eventually I could pass on all of those different 50 roles. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you started doing that, how, how much time passed before you ended up owning your own or did you just work with your dad's? 
Yes. So when my dad passed, they were left to me. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. So. No, it's okay. All right. Uh, now, if I remember correctly, your dad was actually pretty famous, wasn't he? Well, famous in the assisted living world. Yep. He's known as the okay. godfather of residential assisted living. Okay. Uh, and he actually um, met and, and worked with, did he work with uh, what um, Robert Kiyosaki? They're good friends. They were good friends. Yep. So okay. Robert owns a big box facility down the road from me here in Scottsdale, Arizona, um, him and his ex-wife, Kim. And so when my dad met them, you know, years back, he was like, hey, you're the assisted living guy. And they became fast friends and Robert invests in it. My dad invested in it. So it was a great yeah. friend. Most definitely. And I think everyone can um, understand that, you know, Robert Kiyosaki's rich dad, poor dad is kind of like the, the godfather to, you know, uh, real estate. And it's like what everybody read first just to get like change their mindset, I guess. So at least it did for me. I can't speak for everybody, but everybody I've heard from has said the exact same thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so Tell me where you're at now and what you're doing now, because running three assisted living facilities, although that's a great business, it's fun. Um, I know you got to be doing more than that. Yeah. So we have the three homes and then we have the five other businesses. And the main one that I focus on is residential assisted living Academy, where we teach and train real estate investors and entrepreneurs how to start own and operate their own assisted living homes. So we host trainings about eight times a year in Phoenix, Arizona, and we have an okay. online course and we're teaching thousands of students each year how to do this all on their own. And so it's not a franchise, it's just an educational course, but I find a lot of joy in doing that. And that takes up most of my time. That's awesome. Now for anybody who is interested or at least want to look it up, we did include the link in the description, whether you're on Facebook or whether you're on our YouTube channel, um, go down to the description, you'll see the link there. So we did include that um, just after your bio. So um, so check it out. I highly, highly recommend, I uh, highly recommend you for any of this because everybody that I've talked to that has, that has dealt with you has said nothing but great things. Oh, so, I appreciate that. um, Once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room